Welcome and greetings to all. I am Shenlong Pendragon, the Lore Master. So, as always, a quick disclaimer. I don't own any of the images or the story in this video. The credit for these all belong to their original sources. I would also like to take a moment to apologize for the delay in uploading this video. Uh, I haven't had a lot of time to do recording over the last three weeks, so uh, I hope you'll forgive me for that. But without further ado, let's move on. So, last time, I told you the legend of Anko. However, today... So, the first legend I have for you today is the Kelpie, and there it is. The Kelpie traditionally appears as a very large, powerfully built, either black or white horse. However, the Celtic legends state that it is a shape-shifting spirit, which has the ability to take on a human form with the hooves of a horse rather than feet. This interesting sort of adaptation led to the Christian belief that Kelpies are actually water demons of satanic origin and not spirits. The Kelpies themselves, their origin could potentially be traced back to Ireland, where they're referred to as each usag or water horse, and they'll come back to the water horse later on. The other potential origin for these creatures is uh, pagan Scandinavia, where horses were sacrificed to appease water spirits and water gods. The uh, Kelpie itself is a Scottish name, and almost every bo large body of water within Scotland has some form of Kelpie story associated with it. The most famous of these is the Loch Ness Monster, which for a very long time was believed to be a Kelpie, until it was shown that uh, this creature potentially could be a form of marine reptile or amphibious reptile, much like a plesiosaur. For anyone that doesn't know, a plesiosaur is a form of marine reptile that lived during the Jurassic period. Uh, Kelpies themselves are said to do one of two things when humans encounter them. They will either give them a ride on their back safely across the bodies of water to the other side so they can continue travelling, or when the human mounts them, they will dive into the water and drag the human to their death uh, in order to eat them. Very lovely story, I know, but that's what the legends say. Uh, moving on from the uh, Kelpie, I did promise I'd talk briefly about the term Water Horse or Ich Usag. Uh, for anyone who remembers the movie The Water Horse, which is actually filmed and features Loch Ness, uh, that's where the name Water Horse comes from, from the traditional Irish uh, word for these creatures, which may be uh, a way of explaining that the origin is from Ireland. Anyway, I will now move on and discuss the second legend with you. So, the second legend I have for you today is the Cat Sith. It's traditionally a Celtic creature from, from Scotland, however it does appear in some Irish legends as well. There is some Christian literature about this creature, but unlike most creatures adapted f in, into Christian literature from pagan belief, this creature's legends and stories haven't really changed at all in, well, since its legend first surfaced several hundred years ago. Uh, what that should tell you is that this creature was incredibly revered and respected, and as a result its stories have been passed down so often that, well, there was no real need to think of a new story because everybody knew it. The Katzeth itself nearly always appears as a large black cat with green eyes and a white spot in its chest. Uh, However, some legends state that it had the ability to transform into a human, and I will go into that later. The uh, cat sith was believed actually to be on display, or a stuffed cat sith was believed to be on display in a Scottish museum. But much like the cat in this video, it wasn't, or rather in this photo, it really wasn't a real cat sith. It was just a very large stuffed black cat with a white spot on its chest. 
uh, with the exception of fairies which are of Irish origin and the Kelpie itself, the Cat Sith is probably the most celebrated and well-known mythological creature from Scotland. And again, with the exception of the fairy, it actually is the Scottish mythological creature that appears the most often in modern media and literature. When I say media, I'm meaning TV shows, movies, games, magazines, comics, that sort of thing. Uh, to give you a couple of examples, the best one I can think of off the top of my head, if any of you are anime fans, you might remember the anime and manga series Blue Exorcist. Now, the cat sith in that is called Kuro, and he has an interesting adaptation where his tail is not just one tail, but it's a split tail, or a twin tail. Now, the twin-tailed cat sith do appear in the original Legends, but not very often, and it's supposedly a mark of how, well, how powerful or how old they are. So the older and more powerful the cat sith becomes, the more likely it is to obtain this twin-tailed ability. Uh, another sort of potential modern adaptation of the Cat Sith appears in the Final Fran Fantasy franchise. If anyone are here listening is a gamer, then you may remember the Final Fantasy VII and its uh, expansion pack, Dirge of Cerberus games. Now, uh, in these games, I don't remember the name of the Cat Sith in that. It doesn't exactly look like a traditional Cat Sith when you compare this one to the one in the game, I will let you have a look for that if you want yourself, uh, is just an example of where they do appear in modern, modern culture. Anyway, without further ado, let's actually move on and start discussing the stories themselves. One day, deep in the heartlands of Scotland, a young traveller made his way home. Through moor and forest and marsh he travelled until he could travel no more. For, halfway home, through a wood he walked through as a boy, he found that his way was barred by a lake he did not recognize. Heavily he sat down on a rock, filled with despair. He was lost, tired and hungry, and now he had been barred from his way home. But, just as all hope seemed lost, a dark shadow began to emerge from the water. The traveller, prepared to run for his life, not knowing what manner of creature approached him from the watery depths. Its long, dark hair dripped. Its shining flanks glinted in the sunlight. Mist circled round the creature like a cloak of fog. Its evil, misty eyes were fixed upon him like the eyes of a ghost, as it slowly and deliberately made its way through the reeds towards him. The traveller was about to run when the creature emerged from the fog. Laughing at his own fear, he sat back down on a rock, for this was no evil creature, but merely a horse, wet from riding through the lake. He uttered a sigh of relief and wondered how on earth the horse had managed to make it out into this part of the forest alone, for clearly it had not had a rider, but surely someone must own it. The horse turned its side to him and flicked its tail, gesturing with its head. The traveller stared at it in wonder, thinking, what on earth is happening? Again, the horse flicked its tail and gestured with its head. It appeared to be offering him a ride. The traveller looked across the lake and back to the horse. Could this horse really give him a ride across the water? The man cleared his throat. Uh, excuse me, water horse, if that is indeed what you are. Uh, mayhaps. Are you able to take me across this lake so I may continue my journey home? The horse flicked its tail and gave a dip of its head. Eagerly, the man climbed onto the back of the horse, hoping to continue his journey home. The 
horse turned towards the lake, and before the traveller knew what had happened, it had died for the water. Now, in this particular tale, no one actually knows the true ending of the story. Some say that the horse, or Kelpie, as this is what the creature is, actually did help the traveller get across the lake, and other stories say that the Kelpie actually killed him and then ate him uh, by dragging him to his watery grave. Uh, it's worth pointing out at this stage that the uh, Kelpies were sometimes believed to actually kill people by accident, and they actually didn't want to eat people. They were a water spirit that actually craved companionship because they were lonely. So when they dived into the water with their new new human friend, they accidentally drowned them by mistake. Uh, this doesn't appear very often in stories, but it is just one potential possibility of what may have happened to the traveller in this tale. Uh, some of you, as I did mention earlier, will remember the water horse uh, story, where the story says that the water horse was actually born from an egg and then raised by the traveller. They are basically the same story, just two different variants of it, where the man actually finds the kelpie as an egg or as a young one and then raises him for several weeks and then the then asks to be taken across the water. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that particular tale. Uh, the Kelpie is quite a very quite a famous Scottish story. Anyway, let's now move on to the Cat Sith. The darkness is feared by many, for in the night it is said that many an evil creature awaits, biding their time for the right moment to strike. Yet, in the highlands of Scotland, no creature is more elusive than the legendary Cat Sith. Inspired by the Scottish Wildcat, this creature is claimed to be the true king of cats. One day, a man returned home all of a flutter, eager to tell his wife and his cat, Old Tom, what he had seen. For that earlier that day, the man had witnessed nine black cats, each sporting a white spot on their chest, carrying a coffin with a crown resting upon it. If this sight had not been strange enough, one of the cats, as they passed, turned to him and said, Tell Tom Tillrun that Tim Tolrum is dead. Old Tom then exclaimed, What? Old Tim is dead? Then I'm... King of the Cats! With a flick of his tail, old Tom disappeared up the chimney, never to be seen by his human owners again. In the old days, the Highland clans of Scotland said never to trust a cat Sith, for they could steal the souls of the newly departed by passing over the corpse before burial. To keep the beasts away, the watches, or Fael Fadach, also known as the Late Wakes, were performed night and day until the burial. This enabled the beasts to be kept away from the body so the soul can be allowed to rest in peace. However, it was not enough, so the humans of the clan played games of leaping and wrestling and riddle talking as well as trapping and baiting snares with catnip and playing music in the hope that the cats would be distracted away from the bodies of those who had died. Until the burial had been completed and the funeral over, no fires were lit in the camp or the villages, for cats were drawn to the warmth and enjoyed basking beside the flames. On the island of Samhain, the people left sources of milk for the cat Sith, hoping to receive its blessing. For any that forgot to leave out milk for the cat Sith would be cursed, and the cow's milk would soon run dry, leaving them unable to provide for themselves and their families. Some say that the cat Sith were witches or even were cats, 
that could transform themselves nine times at will. However, on the ninth time, they would forever stay in cat form, never again to take on a human form. This is believed to be the origin of the saying that cats have nine lives. And thus ends the tales of the Kelpie and the Cat Sith. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to this. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please remember to like and subscribe for more lore, myths, legends, and stories. Uh, before I end the video, I'd like to take a moment to have a quick couple of updates for the channel. Uh, my next video is going to be a special uh, episode. Uh, it's in light of my recent return from Spain. Uh, the story is, well, it's both Spanish and Scottish in its own right, and hopefully you'll find that interesting and enjoyable. The reason why I want to do it is because it actually holds a significant sort of value for myself and my family, and I particularly find this story very interesting. Uh, in other updates, this will be the last Celtic mythology video I do for now. I most likely will come back and do more later on, but I think after five episodes that's a good place to leave it off for the moment. The next mythology I will be doing will be focusing primarily on the Egypt mythology, uh, I would love to also hear any feedback that you guys have for me off the uh, videos that I'm doing so far. Uh, please let me know what you think, and if there's anything you want me to improve or do differently, I would love to hear it. Also, if you heard any different versions of the stories I've told you so far, then also do feel free to uh, leave them in the comment section or uh, link some sort of article that you've seen on them, because I would love to hear any other sort of versions of the stories. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am Shenlong Pendragon, and until next time, remember, knowledge is power.